loaf of bread, a dozen eggs, and a gallon of milk. A loaf of bread, a dozen eggs, and a gallon. Oh, hey, how you doing? Keith here from Mind of Modern Man. Nice to see you. Welcome back to another edition of Truck Tales. Uh, a couple people have asked why I do these videos in the truck. And in case you missed the first couple videos that we did, it's because it's the only time I have to myself with family, friends, uh, you know, a house to take care of, little kids running around, work. The only time that I have that's actually quiet is in my truck on my way to work. So I pull over, do a little video, and we're all better for it. So that's why we do these truck tales. Today, we're going to talk about some of my favorite toys growing up. Uh, we did the 80s favorite 80s movies and I got real nostalgic about it and you actually can uh, I think you can probably click the link up here and see the video about the 80s movies but in the nostalgia I started watching on Netflix a show called Toys That Made Us and it's this documentary series it's fantastic each episode is a different uh, line of toys from when we were young and they do an entire line of Star Wars toys they've done Lego they've done Barbie um, G.I. Joe, they've done a lot of different the toys that we grew up. It's really cool. It's really fun to watch. And I started thinking about my toys growing up, the ones that really stayed with me, the ones I used over and over and over again. So before we get into the top 10, let's just, just go ahead and put it on the table. Anyone who's been watching this or reading mindofmodernman.com know how big of a Star Wars fan I am. So let's just say that Star Wars action figures are in a world all to themselves and they're not even going to be a part of this list because that would be the quick top 10. Here's my 10 favorite action figures. Um, I still have a lot of my my original collection. We had it in the cool Darth Vader uh, carrying case. That was so cool. But uh, So let's just take Star Wars figures, put them to the side, and we'll know that they are loved but not part of this list. So let's start the top 10 lists of toys that I grew up with that were so much fun for me to play. Number 10 is from a cartoon series called Mask. Anyone ever hear of Mask? It was Mobile Armored Strike Command with, you know, the alternative spelling of command with a K. But these vehicles would transform. Now, not like Transformers that they turn into a robot, but the vehicles, like one of them was a sports car that the doors would open and it could fly. Um, those were the ones. My favorite toy from Mask was um, a Jeep. And the Jeep was driven by a character named Dusty. And the Jeep's name was Gator because the Jeep could open and outshot a little like boat and he could ride in the boat so he was both on land and sea so I could play with it in the bathtub and on the ground and it was fantastic uh, all the mask characters have these big masks on their head and they would they would cover their head up and they'd be able to have these special powers and they'd shoot out lasers and they do all kinds of really cool stuff um, but the obviously the little action figures didn't do that but Dusty's Gator Jeep was my favorite in that line and I'm pretty sure that I included it anytime I was playing with any line of action figures. Um, so that was really cool. If you haven't seen Mask, it was only a couple seasons. It was in the middle, mid 80s. Uh, it was like started around 1986, I think. Uh, you go check it out. It's actually kind of fun. They keep thinking they're going to resurrect it. They've resurrected everything else, uh, but um, they haven't yet. But it's going to be really good. So I'm sure you can catch it somewhere. I'm sure it's on YouTube uh, or whatever. And uh, check it out. Number nine, the original Star Wars lightsabers. Now, these weren't the kind that, like, you have now. They go, and they collapse back into each other. This was just one long, solid piece of plastic. And it kind of had these little air holes in it that when you swung it, it would go, and it was fantastic. Uh, this kid that I was in scouts with in school named Chris, he had a set of them at his house, and I loved to go over to his house and be able to play with these things. And we'd go out in the front yard, and we'd fight with them because there were no lawsuits. There were no kids beating up kids. It was just a lot of fun. And I absolutely love them. They didn't glow uh, like those ones that you can buy now, those special effects lightsabers. These were just really cool little plastic lightsabers and they were solid and I you could go and they had them like in this this collector stand kind of like you would buy um you know like plastic bats or something like that you and it was just you'd go in and be like I don't have the red one or I don't have the yellow one or and it was just a lot of fun and I loved having those little lightsabers now uh number eight Castle Grayskull from He-Man now He-Man was a cool line of toys to play and the main set was Castle Grayskull. This huge plastic, of course, uh, play set that had a big face on the front. And it was the main headquarters. And I used it for the main headquarters for many of my different games. Because I loved to combine 
all my figures together. So kind of like Laugh Olympics, uh, which anyone, if anyone remembers that, or Battle of the Network Stars, where all these people from different shows, the Love Boat, people from different shows all together onto one show. Uh, they would come together. And that's how I would play my games. So Castle Grayskull might be the headquarters for G.I. Joe and He-Man is there to help out. Uh, it was really kind of cool. So Castle Grayskull, we wanted it for so long and I think it was under the Christmas tree one year and it was one of the most exciting things uh, that we could possibly have. Um, in line with that was the Thundercats Thunder Tank. The Thunder Tank was this big piece of machinery uh, and it had claws that would open up and things would come out and then it had a back and you were able to sit in it and Panthro was the driver and Panthro was the coolest Thundercat of all. Hey kids, Uncle Keith here with some useless trivia. Did you know that the actor who played the voice of Panthro was the same guy who was the grandpa on the Cosby show? Pretty cool. Also. The voice of Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Uncle Phil from The Fresh Prince. Just the service we provide here at Uncle Keith's House of Useless Information. So the Thunder Tank. You had the ability to go through anything. In my mind, the Thunder Tank was invincible. Whoever you put in it, whether it was He-Man driving it or Panthro driving it or 14 different little G.I. Joe figures, they were able to go through any penetration. They knocked through the lines of everything. The only thing that could beat the Thunder Tank Boba Fett with his rocket pack. Uh, number six, speaking of Star Wars, was Ewok Village. Now, Return of the Jedi gets a bad rap as a movie that everyone thinks the Ewoks were kind of a sellout and just for making kids. But in 1983, I was a kid and I loved it. And on Christmas morning, Santa would always leave certain things unwrapped under the tree. And one of them was Ewok Village. This thing was awesome. It had a little net that came down that you could catch people in just like in the movie. Uh, it had the little spit. It had all the little huts. One of them you could put someone in and they fall all the way through to the bottom. I mean it was a great little playset, and we used it forever. I actually think that it's one of the remaining playsets of the original Star Wars stuff that we still have in my parents' basement. Sorry mom and dad. Um, but the Ewok Village is there with an ad at which only has like I think three legs. So uh, Ewok Village was really well played with and we loved it. It was a lot of fun uh, and I think you can get it on eBay now for like $16,000. Um, number five, speaking about uh, toys underneath the tree on Christmas morning, this might be one of my very first Christmas memories of knowing what was under the tree and it was a Batmobile. Not just any Batmobile. It was like based on the old cartoon series because it was before the Tim Burton movies came out or any of those and it was plastic, but it was a pedal car and it had all these levers in it and it's got these great decals on the side. It was fantastic. I remember seeing it in the Sears or JC Penny catalogs that would always come around Christmas time and thinking what an amazing gift and that's what Santa brought that year. I pedaled that thing until the wheels were nubs. It was awesome. My brother then came on with the Dukes of Hazard big wheels thing to try to take me on, but I had the Batmobile. I was cool. Um, the JC Penny catalog talking about that. Does anyone remember those? Those used to be the greatest ways to learn what toys were coming. And then they would have these sets. They would set them up. Each page would be like, here's all the Star Wars figures and here's all the G.I. Joe figures. And you'd sit there and you'd be able to circle. I want this one and this one and I need this one. I do not relish my parents having to be at Toys R Us or whatever toy store back in the day sitting there with all the different action figures and wondering which one does Keith have and which one does he not have. That took a lot of skill and I can appreciate that to this day. I really do. Um, you know, because that's special to be able to know I didn't get duplicates or if I did, they were stormtroopers and you were supposed to have duplicates. Um, but the JC Penny and the Sears catalogs, I think service merchandise. Does anyone remember service merchandise? Bonus points if you remember the service merchandise. Those catalogs would come as the playbook and you'd turn right to the back page and it was so, so cool. Number four um, was Soundwave the Transformer. So it actually turned into a boombox that played cassettes. Hey kids, Uncle Keith here again. A cassette is how we used to listen to music. Before CDs and before MP3s, we had to buy these little pieces of plastic with tape on the inside, a ribbon. And the only way you could fix it if it broke was with a pencil. Hmm. So Soundwave was a bad guy. 
he was a Decepticon. Optimus Prime, awesome. Bumblebee, awesome. But Soundwave had something that none of else had. His chest was the cassette player, and it would open up, and out of it came more Transformers. It was Transformers within Transformers. And they turned into Laserbeak, a, 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 a eagle or falcon or something like that, and a Rampage or Ravage. Ravage, that's his name. Ravage was like a a panther. And these tapes, these cassettes, would transform into those characters. So Soundwave, you got like three for one. And then you could buy some other ones. There were these guys that had these arms that would punch the, punch the ground and, you know, a couple different ones. But the fact that you could have these little transformers within the big transformer is why I think I love that one so much. And he had a really cool voice, too. Uh, that little robotic. I'm not even going to try it now because maybe we can find a video clip of it and we can put it in here. Autobot alert. Okay. There. See? Really cool voice. Uh, number three, still play with them today, Lego. And it's not Legos. I watched a documentary on this. It's Lego. Plural is Lego. Who knew? Um, you get to build all your own toys. You get to build an entire city. You get to build Star Wars vehicles. You get to build characters. Now, there's all new things now, and they've got My Friends, which is all pink and blue, and they've got, you know, the little mi mini figures that you collect, and of course, there's the Lego movie where everything is awesome. Yeah. But back in the day, we just would buy the boxes and build the stuff. We had the castle set, we had the pirate ship set, and we had a. Um, fire engine set, a firehouse. And the firehouse was huge. And it had these little plexiglass garage doors that you'd put together and you'd clip them all together and they could go up and they'd raise into the roof of the firehouse and they'd come back down and you could drive in the back. And we had roads everywhere. We were lucky enough to have like an entire half a basement was a playroom. And we had these, the road sets all along the floor and we would have the firehouse and the police station and the, you know, we'd build an um, hospital and we'd build a school and we'd build all these different things. But the firehouse, the firehouse was this really special piece. Then of course, you take them all down and you put them in the giant bin. And anyone can't hear that sound of a big giant Rubbermaid bin filled with, filled with Legos going shh, 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 as you walk. That's the sound of childhood. In fact, my son asked my brother their last visit, where is the bin? And the bin is finally coming to my house and we are going to play Legos like nobody's ever played Legos before. At Lego. Lego. Sorry. Number two, my Huffy bike. What Back in the day, we would walk out of the house first thing in the morning and not come back until dinner time. And the first thing we would do is hop on our bike and go find our friends. Um, my bike was this yellow and blue Huffy BMX bike. I rode this thing like crazy. We used it. We made it the Thunder Tank. We made it when we played the A-Team. It was our van. We used it to be Voltron Lions. And we would just use it to race. And we'd use it to get everywhere. And we'd go places. And we'd be outside on our bike. I loved this thing until one fateful day. I was racing down, my parents lived towards the bottom of the steep hill and I, I came racing down this hill and I raced through our yard and we had a rope swing in between two of our trees in the front yard. And I was racing down because I was going to a classic car show with my uncle. And as my bike came down, the rope swing rope got caught in my front wheel and I went flying head over key, tea kettle right onto the driveway and banged my head. I'm pretty sure I had a concussion. My parents tested me for one and I didn't, but there was a lot of nausea going on at the car show and it was a thousand degrees if I remember, but I got back on the bike again. And I rode it and I rode it. I hated it when I had to give up that bike when I got too big for it. We had to move on to a 10 speed bike. I hated that, but I loved my bike so much. And the number one toy, my number one favorite toy, I am from Shelton, Connecticut, home of the Wiffle Ball Factory. Wiffle Ball, baseball for anyone to play anywhere. I played this my entire life. I have photographic evidence of my grandmother pitching or hitting with me and me pitching and I had some amazing form. See, look at that hair. It's pretty cool. But 
I still to this day will play wiffle ball at any given moment. I think I tore my shoulder from hours and hours and hours of wiffle ball, most likely with John. But I played wiffle ball with my brother all the time. I played wiffle ball with any friends that would come over. We'd go on vacation and play wiffle ball. It was travel. And the best part of it all for us is anytime you got a new wiffle ball set, you could take the box or you could take the ball itself and look at it. And it said made in Shelton, Connecticut. And you just felt proud. It's called wiffle ball. No other thing will do. The one with all the different holes in it, no. The ones that are orange or red, no. The white original wiffle ball is the only way to go. So those are my 10 toys. What are yours? Head over to mindofmodernman.com, find the post with this video in it, and leave us some comments. Let me know what you like. What did you grow up with? What was the one toy that you couldn't do without? I know I didn't mention any G.I. Joes and that modern man Steve's going to be annoyed about that. So Steve, go to the website and tell me what your favorite is. Or of course you can leave comments down below here on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. That would be more than fine too. Uh, thank you for listening. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr at Mind of Modern Man. I am on Twitter at Modern Keith. Uh, thank you to our patrons for Sandy, Susan, Manny, Mike, and Jeff. Thank you for always letting us do what we can do. Thank you for listening, watching, and reading. If you'd like to subscribe, you can click the little button up here. If you'd like to watch another video that we've done, you can click that down here. But thank you for watching. We hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time. So long.